Peace, peace, beloveds. Welcome to Peace Pipe TV. It's Phoenix Nadi. Um, you guys know uh, Miko Wolf. He will not be here with us tonight, but we always want to shout him out and give him some love. Thank you so much for being here, Facebook and YouTube. Um, if you are on Facebook and you want to be a little more active, please head over to YouTube. We are YouTube at Peace Pipe TV. All right, at Peace Pipe TV. So we have a very, very wonderful show for you guys tonight. We have our special guest, uh, Michelle Gibson here, who is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blogger, researcher. She has studied some wonderful things. And as you guys can see by the title, we're talking about the Moorish paradigm tonight. We're talking about sacred ge geometry, ley lines, and an advanced world civilization. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring her up so she can introduce herself like only she can. Give me just a moment here, you guys. And welcome, 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 Michelle Gibson. How are you? I'm doing great, Phoenix, and it's an honor to be here today. Thank you for inviting me to your show. Oh, you are most welcome. We are so grateful and honored to have you here. So... Um, before we let you introduce yourself, um, I want to share some of the comments that we have here. We have um, Jesus Pina, who says, peace and love, family. We have Carrie Jones, who says, can't wait. Uh, we have Jacob uh, Burns, who says, uh, going to be a powerful show. I have been following her work, and she is on point. Uh, let's see. We have Kenny Evans. Who says, peace, Miko and, and Phoenix, always great content. We appreciate you guys so much again for being here. Uh, we have Chance Bradley who says they brought the wonderful Miss Gibson to the show. You all that we are Moors. Now you will believe it from a European. <laughs> we appreciate your comment. Uh, let's see. Well, who else do we have? We have Bernice who says fire. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And again, you guys, sorry, Miko will not be here tonight, uh, but um, he'll be here in spirit with us. Of course, he got some business to attend to. Uh, let's see. Kenny Evans says, I love what you all are doing with the show. Uh, maybe one day I can be on it. And that is absolutely a possibility. You can always email us at info at peacepipetv.com. Uh, let us know what you're interested in. Um, give thanks for all of the sweet and wonderful comments you guys gave us. Um, her blogs are all, always fire. Yes, they are. They are phenomenal. So let's get into letting the people know who you are. Those who don't know who you are, Ms. Michelle Gibson, go ahead and let everybody know uh, who you are. <laughs> Thank you. I'm on a journey I never even imagined in my wildest dreams. And I absolutely believe I was born to do this. Um, the synchronicities in my life have always been there. And without them, um, you know, again, it's highly doubtful that I would be here talking to you today or do any of the work that I've been putting out for the last almost six years. And I... <sighs> I guess I started really noticing things when I was a kid. I grew up outside of Washington, D.C. In, in a place called Rockville, Maryland. And you know, they leave us clues lying around in place names and, and things like that. So that was one of my ahas when I really started waking up to this. It was Rock Hill, Rockville, Rock Hill, Stone Hill, <laughs> Point of Rocks. Um, the people that brought us the world that we live in today really like to rub our noses in the fact that an ancient, advanced, megalithic civilization that built everything in the world today. So it's not only an ancient civilization, something happened, I believe relatively recently, that caused a cataclysm that 
basically wiped the civilization off the face of the earth and the controllers came mm-hmm. in and started setting up their new civilization on the ruins that they created of the original civilization. And um, as far as how I came into the knowledge, and I'll, and I'll get into that because that's an important part of the story. Um, it started when I was young and just noticing things in my environment. And uh, I like to tell the story of how I was about six or seven years old and my, my dad was at softball practice for the church softball team and I ran down into the woods and I like to go down there because there were these big stones and this was um, in Twinbrook section of Rockville and that's right next to Rock Creek you know you look at Rock Creek and you know there's pictures there's boulders in the creek and these were things that I was starting to to realize as I was coming into the knowledge and I always liked shows about hidden information so in search of mm. i love to watch when i was growing up and also unsolved mysteries um arthur c clark's mysterious world i love those kinds of things but at that time and i'll be i'm almost 61 there wasn't that much available it wasn't until the internet came along that more information started to be able to reach people so when I was younger, I, I just did not have access to those kinds of materials. And there's no reason at all that I should know any of this. I, I grew mm-hmm. up in a middle class family. My parents were teachers. They were um, Baptists, um, not particularly strict, but, you know, went to church and things like that. And I just something just didn't feel right about what. The, the whole organized religion aspect of it. So it's like um, spirituality versus religion. And I believe at this point that the controllers brought organized religion in when they hijacked the timeline and everything else. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. in terms of my own personal journey, um, wanting to know the truth being aware of things in my environment that were out of place. You know, like everybody else, I didn't see it until I was much older or until I was ready. But I made mental notes <laughs> you know, in, in my in my mind, you know, it's like something would stick out. And um, when I started to receive the information that helped me put put it together, it, it came back. Mm-hmm. And so, um, for example, I grew up next to a golf course in Montgomery County, Maryland. And the street that we lived on was, had kind of, it was called Lindley Terrace. So it was like a boomerang shape. And the back side of the street was really sloped around the middle of it. And then where Ooh. we lived, we were on the flattest lot on one of the flattest slots on the street. So it was flat and then it, it, it curved around and it was steep. And then there was an elementary school right next to where I lived. And there were a lot of earthworks there. So we were like surrounded by- it was like a mound. <laughs> and it was, yeah. it, it, it was, but I didn't think about that until I started getting this other information in. Mm-hmm. And so um, I, have always made different choices in my life. So I had a fairly conventional upbringing and then I joined the army when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of got me away from my place of origin. And Mm -hmm. that started a pattern of moving and living in different places and having different experiences. And I still didn't have this piece of the puzzle, but I was, pretty comfortable with change and I was I've always been open to the information I didn't have to have things be a certain way mm-hmm. and and so I, I like to say I unplugged from the matrix a long time ago just in and how things have unfolded in my life and how I've lived my life and uh, I ended up marrying an army sergeant retired army sergeant after I graduated from college 
and and then he and I, you know, he gave me the freedom. He what he what he and I weren't on the same page, but he gave me the freedom to have alternative experiences. And so we moved to Alaska in '94 the first time, and and from '94 to '99 I was there, and that was when I started um, learning about other ways of seeing the world besides the lens that I grew up in. So I was exposed to a group of shamanism and, you know, just kind of this alternate way of experiencing life that was different from what I grew up with. And my husband died in 2001. I'll skip through a lot of that stuff. Um, I went through a dark night of the soul after yeah. he passed away. <laughs> So I, I had to have a couple of lessons over again. Um, but by the time I, I got control of my life again, um, when, when I left that situation in 2006, I went back to Alaska. And from the moment I made that decision, I started having all of the experiences that I needed in order to, to really start putting the puzzle together. And so... Uh, when I, I, I lived back in Alaska from 2006 to 2012, um, had some phenomenal experiences there. Again, the, it was like the synchronicities have, have just been working nonstop. And I was able to connect with information about sacred geometry when I lived there. I went to a Flower of Life workshop. Um, I read books like Graham Hancock's Fingerprints of the Gods. Um, mm -hmm. But I started getting this information on Atlantis, Atlantis rising, hidden knowledge, hidden information was coming to me um, th through friends. I, mean, I had a friend who liked to read books. She got the library of the former president of the University of Alaska at Fairbanks, and he had all these books in his collection. And so I was over at Libby's house and I'm like, I'll read that and that and that. And <laughs> And, and, and so one of the books was um, uh, Robert Boval's book about the Orion, I think it's called the Orion Mystery and talking about the belt starts of the Pyramids of Giza lining up with yeah. Yeah. Orion's belt. I'm like, okay. And then um, John Volo Mikhelzadek, who brought teachings about sacred geometry and flower of life back into this world starting in the early 70s, uh, at least to the general population. And um, I was watching a lot of his presentations, and there were a couple of things that really stuck out. And and one, he was talking about this, this grid had, that had been built all over the world. And he said after the fall of Atlantis, and you know, a lot of people talk about that being thousands of years ago. And where I am mm -hmm. at this point is, no, that did not happen thousands of years ago. The fall of Atlantis happened relatively recently. And I've collected a lot of information to actually prove what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it's right now it's scattered in, in different blog posts and videos. And my videos are made for my blog posts. So it's the same information. Um, but I'm starting to put the information about the cataclysm into one place and i'm mm -hmm. about two thirds of the way through that right now and i'm so looking forward to that <laughs> <laughs> i really it's, am it's you know it, it sounds crazy but look at the world we're living in today and it's it's not any crazier than what right, right now. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and, and it absolutely. actually explains it <laughs> why it's so crazy we did not get here on our own. We've all been manipulated. We've all been lied to. And um, and so I'm going to circle back to that in just a moment. But um, where I was going, so I'm learning about this, this worldwide civilization that built all these points on the earth or the, the mm -hmm. grid system. And Drunvalo called it a synthetic grid after the fall of Atlantis. So I'm saying I don't think it was thousands of years ago anymore. But anyway, this is part of my story. And at the time, I was thinking, well, that sounds great, but who could have built it? And 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 then uh, Megalithomania came along on YouTube, um, or mm -hmm. not just YouTube. They have a channel, but they have these conferences. 
And in 2011, I watched, I think was the first time I ever watched it. And all these great presenters uh, included Klaus Dona and Michael Tellinger and Hugh Newman and, and all of these other things, uh, these people, uh, Wayne Herschel. And, you know, again, there's, you know, the mirror of heaven, all of these things on the earth that are in alignment with constellations and mm -hmm. equinoxes. And, and it's not just ancient stonework, it's modern buildings. Modern as well, yes. Mosques and capital buildings and churches and everything. Mm -hmm. Manhattan Gate. Um, the and I know the layout of uh, Washington, D.C., um, the areas of the Pentagon and all of that, it's its all built on those lines as well as uh, using sacred geometry as well, generating right. energy, right? Mm -hmm. And that was all over the earth. You know, this did not happen randomly, which is what our official narrative tells us. Mm -hmm. oh, this land was free and available and some guy bought it. And within a few years, all these marvelous buildings were here and nothing to see here move on you know <laughs> and that worked when they had control of the narrative mm -hmm. um it, you know this this takeover is, is complex because it involved rewrite you know them rewriting the history to what they wanted to push and then you mm -hmm. get distractions and drugs addictions um you know keeping keeping humanity stuck in lower chakras you know, in, in root and in sacral and, you know, they really don't want us in, in solar. <laughs> they really mm -hmm. don't want us in heart. And you go in the up further up and it's like, no, we don't want that person that can do those things. And so um, our, the history that we know, you know, it's not been what we've been told. It's not been for the reasons we've been told. And, and so the people, beings, groups, whatever behind this, um, you know, they, they need human energy. They need all these other things for them. And so anything they can do to keep us ignorant and, and divided and, and worse, they're doing so we don't focus on, you know, the wizard behind the curtain and the Wizard of Oz. Or the man, the little guy behind the curtain. We're 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 looking at each other, going, you know, because they they can push our buttons to get us to fight each other. While, mm -hmm. you know, up until the last few years, they haven't even been visible. And so, um, thankfully, we're living in that time when the curtain is just, you know, opening wider and wider, and and people can start to see what's really there in front of us and ask questions. And so, so I got, I kind of got started in it with sacred geometry. That was my, my first step. And mm -hmm. then because I had learned about sacred geometry and the flower of life, I, I was able to find a, a star tetrahedron by connecting cities and places in North America. And, and so, so that would be the, the same shape as the Merkaba. Um, mm -hmm. It's called, you know, we would most know, know, known as the Star of David, but it's that same shape. Mm -hmm. And that whole identity got usurped by, by these beings that are behind what's taken place here. So they're like saying, it's us. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and so the lost tribes of Israel aren't lost. They're, they're suppressed, their identities are hidden, and it all connects back to the Moors. Everything connects mm -hmm. back to the Moors. And, you know, as part of this takeover to, to keep us dumbed down, they, they've divided everything out, the original symbolism out, say, well, you know, this is one thing and this is something else and this is something else. Mm -hmm. As I know, it was all together as one science, more science. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's been, those kinds of things have been used to control humanity. Mm -hmm. um, 
and they they didn't build anything, but they 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 can. I want to. I, I would reverse engineer is what comes to mind, but it's more than that. It's like they can use their occult rituals to mm -hmm. try to keep us under their spell, because that's right. really, unfortunately, that's what we're talking about. And I wish, I wish, I wasn't right about that, but I do believe that's part of what we've been dealing with. Is is their ritualizing to keep us from waking up and and realizing what's really going on here. So with that type of information and knowing that um, all of these places pretty much correlate together, they have the same, um, a lot of the same structures, a lot of the same images. Um, like we have um, Chichen Itza and then you have Angkor Wat's and then you have um, all of these other different areas um, where you're looking at these, these temples or buildings that are built kind of the same way with the triptych windows and doors and things like that, um, piecing those together, we can pretty much say that it was like the same civilization that pretty much developed these places and built them. And maybe even recent times, others added to them. Uh, possibly, but I'm, I'm not going to give them much credit for much of anything <laughs> mm -hmm. other than they, they seem to know how to destroy things. Um, and reverse engineer things like water systems, so like mm -hmm. dams and and so forth. I think they've mm -hmm. they've used the advanced hydrology of the original civilization to flood places, and or they've the the water's gone. So you'll see mm -hmm. empty canals, canal beds all over. I mean, I was living in Oklahoma when I woke up to this, um, but I've seen it. I saw it there. I've seen it here in Arizona where I live. Um, there used to be water running there and, you know, so they've, they've used it to create what they want and, mm -hmm. and, and we are far, far backwards from where we were. So they've, they've given us this narrative of this is the best that it's ever been. And it's like, no, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I, I see a couple of questions coming through here. Um, yeah. <laughs> just uh, kind of what a few moments ago, um, yeah, the, 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 the star tetrahedron is, is our light body. It's the shape of our light body, but not just mm -hmm. our, our light body, but the earth and the universe mm -hmm. and the creation shape and of the problem. universe and, and mm -hmm. toroidal um, vortex based uh, not only mathematics, but that that's the creation shape, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how, how we even come into be. And, um, I'm, I'm not afraid of putting this out because we, we've gotten into this mess because of people not saying it. And, you know, people have said to me over the years, things like, you don't need to do this. And I feel like I have to do this. You know, it's like, if I had this level of knowledge and I have more every day and didn't do something with it, I couldn't live mm -hmm. with myself. Absolutely. You know? I, I, totally, just, I agree with that. It's and, like, I totally understand, yeah. and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, if, if we don't get this, they came so close to getting away with it. Mm -hmm. And the crimes against humanity are just off the charts. There's the oh, ones yeah. you know about, and then there's the ones you don't know about. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, the genocide, the the theft ongoing to this day with these governments that don't care about their citizens, and that's just not in where we live. This is all over the earth. Um, you know, bringing in communism and socialism, and that was their plan all along. Um, keeping us locked down, keeping us imprisoned. You know, two tier system of justice where the criminals get away with everything and. You know, the little guy doesn't have a chance. <laughs> you know, the little guy that is caught with an ounce of some kind of drug. And, you know, it's like they want and they've been doing that. I mean, this is their M.O. <laughs> it's it's like um, 
so I'm going to give Star Forts as an example, which I believe were batteries of the Earth's grid system and everything, every mm -hmm. piece of infrastructure was precisely placed on the Earth for a reason and a purpose and a function. And this was a free energy mm -hmm. generating system and it powered, it was, it was worldwide. And so the trains, the subways, the streetcars, um, the towers, the buildings, you know, they've all been reattributed to Europeans, so to speak, Freemasons, but they were all there originally and served a function. And so my, um, my journey involved all the stuff I'm reading uh, and then watching programs on, like megalithomania where dowsers have found the energy lines and then learning about how precise the ancients were. So when I found this star tetrahedron, um, I, I, extended, I extended the lines out and then I wrote down these places. So these are mm -hmm. there's about 15 pages of spreadsheet with cities and places in alignment. And that was where my, my original research started. And then the other thing that happened was I met a Moorish American man in Oklahoma City at a Uni Unity Spiritual Life Center there around 2013. And um, so I had a, a Moor come into my life, very quiet man, but very beautiful man. And he and I went on a journey with two other ladies from Unity where we were going to these places locally. So Red Rock Canyon outside of Oklahoma City. We mm -hmm. went to um, Rockwall in Texas after I learned about Rockwall and stopped by Dallas all, along the way. And, uh, you know, I, I, so felt, <laughs> <laughs> I felt claustrophobic at Dealey Plaza. It's like the place where this assassination was, you know, took place is like, each building is right next to each other and i'm like this you know this what's going on here um and i was already questioning but when i got home i started looking up information on jfk and the masonic involvement in the kennedy assassination mm -hmm. and then i started realizing that the western freemasons weren't benevolent up until that point i i didn't know Mm -hmm. um, and then my, my Moorish friend, Osiris, was was telling me about Moorish masonry, Moorish science, um, the Moorish science temple, and he was sending me information with, from Moorish teachers that I was very open to learning about, and that was making a lot of sense. And I, and I had a lot of other um, synchronistic things happen. Uh, I read Frank Joseph. Frank, Frank Joseph's book, um, The Lost Treasure of King Juba, and I learned about the Washita when I read that book. And, and I had read the book before we went down to Monroe and met with uh, Sister Wanda there, and she took us to Poverty Point. And, oh, that's beautiful. And, and so it's like, okay, this is making sense. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> And, and so I, you know, try looking up megaliths in, in North America. You're not going to find anything. Right. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not, it. yeah. you know, it's not there. And so I was thinking, how am I going to get this information out to other people, what I'm seeing? And it took about two years for me to start blogging and making videos, but during that two year period, I was looking up parks, you know, national, state and local parks because they're hidden in there. Right. And, um, you know, what they don't destroy, because if it's not in a park, it's not protected. And, and you can see construction projects all over the place, especially where I was living in Oklahoma at the time, you know, where I'm looking at it and I'm all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, the red rock differently and um, realizing that they're just, you know, tearing it all up mm -hmm. and you know that this was this was everywhere and it's like something that when you start to tune into it because they haven't told us about it you know they've gone out of their way not to tell the mm -hmm. general public 
um, that they're living on top of this ancient civilization of advanced humans. And, you know, and, and, and because of the way that we've been conditioned and programmed to see things a certain way or taught false history or mm -hmm. um, given distractions, you know, we, people are pretty much in their, in their little zone and, mm -hmm. and, more and more people are waking up and seeing that something's wrong, but you know, there's still a fair amount of people that are still in their little comfort zone and you start, you know, pushing that a little bit and you know, it's like too much. Well, see, I, I know for me, it was, I, I had this push and this nudge to go see these local monuments and places like Cahokia, Alligator Mound, um, uh, the Toltec Mound, all of these different places. And I had like, it's like, you have to see it for yourself. You have to feel it for yourself. There's an energy there that's like no other in these places. And if you're in tune and you're keen to, to this type of energy or just to just sense it, period, then you'll get a sense of what was there before. And you know that it was not something that's just super modern that happened. No, you know, it's something that happened, you know, time, you know, years back and how it really ties into the energy of self. And then the energy of our ancestors, then just the energy of the of the planet itself, period. And then when you realize and you understand what these 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 um structures were for, so you're thinking about the solstice, the equinox, um, the um um the eclipses and things like that. When you think about those, then it really takes you back and it makes you really understand the brilliance of those who created them. And you know, like you said, it's not just here in America, it's all over. They all tie in and link. I'm a big National Geographic fan. So I watch a lot of those where they tie in a lot of the ley lines together and the, the viewpoints. And, and just be aware, there's, there's a number of gatekeeper organizations and Smithsonian is one of them that are hiding information like the giant bones and things like that. Um, and you know their goal is to keep keep this information under wraps mm -hmm. and so i'm i'm doing some research now around who was behind the national geographic as well as smithsonian and things like that and and they mm -hmm. have a specific narrative that they want to push i'm not saying mm -hmm. there's not good information in there i'm just saying kind of start looking at things through the lens of are they revealing information or are they reinforcing the narrative right what do we say we say uh eat the meat and spit out the bones <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. it's, it's like uh, you know museums everything is geared to telling the story just like yeah. the world fairs mm -hmm. you know we built these temporary buildings and they're just gorgeous massive masonry for this particular world's fair and then afterwards we're just going to get rid of them Mm -hmm. And there might be one or two buildings still standing. Well, they're just taking credit for what was done by the original civilization before it's either destroyed or they hide it away and they use it without our knowledge. I mean, there's so many yeah. things that are going on with our knowledge. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to answer some of these questions about who I think the more. Yeah, I want to go ahead and get to them. Let me go and, back <laughs> and pull some out. <laughs> Um, and, and while you're you're doing that, I, 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 I know where I want to go with this because I'm pretty clear in my mind what we're talking about. So mm -hmm. it refers to Lemuria, the ancient mm -hmm. advanced civilization, Moors. That's, that's where mm -hmm. it started. And some other folks have done some really good work. Um, Rick Smith, Richard Smith, some of you may know his work um he was one of the people that i i first encountered when i started looking for information about the moors because it is hard to find it's hard to find this oh, yeah. um you know it's, it's been removed um you know 700 years in spain is about all they get credit for and it's much 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 more than that but the benefit to that is i can go to spain and i can find examples of the same architecture in spain that i find in United States and other places around the world, England, you know, it's all Moorish architecture. Mm -hmm. And so because of the hatchet job that they've done on, on the truth and history, um, 
and that it was all separated out, what I see is just this beautiful worldwide integrated civilization mm -hmm. and it was all connected. And, and so, so you've got the idea of the tribes of Israel, who were they? Well, I see what I know of sacred geometry and of what you can find about the 12 tribes is that they were laid out. Like for example, according to the Zodiac or the months, you know, just it was laid out with the same precise geometry that these cities were. It's all connected geometrically. And so mm -hmm. the people that built the infrastructure of the civilization built their communities and their lives in the same way. It was all mm -hmm. ordered um, astronomically, astrologically. There was a sacred center. Um, mm -hmm. I've recently come into awareness of the giant trees. The giant trees were connected to all of this. And it was a, a natural nurturing divine feminine honoring divine masculine honoring well ordered world. okay and and one of the ways that i understood it when i was first doing this is that this civilization was the highest expression of humanity in physical form and i believe was being co-created with the creator this this beautiful world yeah mm -hmm. and as far as um, the narrative that we've gotten, um, we all come from the Moors. But what the what the Masons did, what the Freemasons, the Western Freemasons did, was they brought in the whole cowboy and Indian narrative. And I think not only that, I think they they were involved in human engineering and social engineering to create the narrative we have. Black people are from Africa, you know, red people are from North America yellow people are from Asia and I'm just going with what we're taught. But no, <laughs> it was like, if we look at it from the perspective of the tribes of Israel, um, then it, it kind of goes back to that ordering of society. And so in that respect, yeah, there were Indian tribes, but they were tribes of Israel and and so for example the tribe of reuben uh, are identified or the seminoles in florida identify with as the tribe of reuben and so do the um original people of australia this you know, brings me to a question that we have here and just just to briefly they wanted to know if um you would consider the african americans moors because there's this narrative now that's going on that the the African Americans who are here were actually the indigenous tribes that originated here, you know, since. I believe that. I mean, I believe that that was part, that the black people from Africa is part of their narrative. It's not the truth. It's it's the indigenous Americans were the ones that built this, and and where I was going with that is that this new identity was foisted on the native people and they were kicked back to the stone age and not just in north america but in australia in africa mm -hmm. the bushmen the san the san people are like the most ancient <laughs> i know the washita are too i mean it's like ancient people and mm -hmm. and all the images we have are these these people in loincloths you know it, right. it wasn't like that they built the architecture of africa but then with the colonials that came in um they took credit for everything everything when when the european colonizers from britain or um, the dutch east india company or the british east india company going into um india is just just breathtakingly gorgeous architecture that they took credit for they stole and um if you look at um, Vedic astronomy, for example, and this is not an area of expertise for me, but the British East India Company comes in and tries to take credit for all of these observatories in India. Mm -hmm. Well, we did this. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the they've been watching the stars 
all over the earth for time oh, immemorial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so um, you know, basically the controllers, the cabal, the usurpers, they came in and and just completely took credit. It's like they gave, they inserted themselves into the narrative and they said, we built this. And so every building, every bridge, every fountain has a story. Mm -hmm. And and usually, um, let's say sometime between the 1850s and let's say the 1930s, they were building all of this colossal, massive, beautiful architecture. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't even add up. But nobody, people didn't question it because we haven't been told about it. It's not in our textbooks. It's not in our movies. It's, it's not in anything that, that we're taught. And again, they're trying to keep us in a lower level of consciousness through you know distractions and consumerism and you know all the the hamster wheel things that we we do want to live in this world because that's what's been given to us and then they they take money every time you turn around <laughs> taxes and whatnot you know it's like they've just been right. taking that's right. all <laughs> they do and that's all they want to do. And it's my personal belief is that their time is almost over. We're, we're watching the last bit of it play out. And I, I think massive changes are coming in. Um, and a lot of it is just, a lot of what is happening is people are waking up, but there's, we're not alone in this. I mean, I I've, I've absolutely believe we're not alone in this and that, um, absolutely. and that there are, forces for good um, and divine forces that are here with us. And it's just th these evil ones were just dug in so deep with their system that it was not an easy takedown because they're in everything. Right. <laughs> they, they, they put stuff well, in our clothes, they put it in our food, they put it in our cleaning supplies. Um, it, you know, there isn't anything that they haven't tried to diminish us with. <laughs> And, and so, um, this, this part about, I just want to finish up the thought with mm -hmm. this part about, you know, so much has been revealed. So the next thing is, okay, let's start talking about this and getting it out as far as the Moors and this advanced civilization mm -hmm. that's just been totally wrecked and removed from our awareness because it was so advanced and so beautiful. So I wanted to get back to um, the um, the star tetrahedron that you found um, and how they they link to, or the, the points, how they link to different, um, I want to say energy vortexes or so um, all over the world. Um, how did you come to find that? And what are some of these locations? <laughs> so, uh, so basically one of my travel friends in Oklahoma said, you need a map, a, a map. And so she got me this, this flat map and it's not a flat earth map. And, and some people think, you know, and I've come to flat earth in my journey on this, but, but I didn't start there. I didn't have an opinion. But whatever it is, it works. <laughs> it works either way because I got so much information out of it. Um, and so it's getting kind of tattered. So I started um, noticing. Mm -hmm. Cities and places it. lining up in lines when I was eating. Mm. And because I knew about sacred geometry, I I kind of was able to find this and it's mm. connecting major cities. And so the apex is in Edmonton and um, the bottom one is in Merida, Mexico. Mm. And so where's where Chichen Itza is. And mm. uh, I found the top one first and I thought, well, maybe let me see if I can find another one. And so I found the bottom one and then I extended the lines out and 
wrote them down, like I said, and then I proceeded to research all these cities and places and alignments. So I'm just going to share my screen for a moment okay. because I have a tremendous amount of information on my website. All right. Um, While you pull that up, let me just let the people know they're asking about your website. It is here on the screen, uh, piercingtheveilofillusion.com. And then you can also go to um, buythisbooktoday.com and purchase her books. Um, they're through Noble 7 Publishing. You also head over to her Patreon, which is also Piercing the Veil of Illusion. She also has a YouTube channel. You can go to at Michelle Gibson 8946. And let's see, you're on Instagram as well, um, which is MB Gibson 10. All right. Please head over and support her. We, we need her to keep digging, <laughs> keep finding more information <laughs> because she's, she's willing to share. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a lot of people out here who are asking for donations and all this stuff, but they're not willing to share. They just want the money and they want to gather what they want. And that's it. We want to support those who are willing to give us the knowledge and wisdom um, that we so we, we so seek, we want, we, we're looking for. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go ahead and get your screen up here now. All right. Are we able to see that okay? If you're in the comments, please just let me know you're able to see the screen okay. So I, I made my first video in 2018, and I wasn't going to be making videos. I was just going to blog. Uh, but then somebody subscribed to my channel, and I thought, well, geez, i got to make videos now. And so I started turning my blog posts into videos after I found a really easy program, which is Wondershare. Mm -hmm. And and so that's fairly easy for me to do. I just convert these. Um, so the information's in writing and it's also in video form. And so I've been, I've been doing this work for about six years pretty intensively. And, you know, the Moorish paradigm, I embraced from the beginning. I understood it, sacred geometry, these ley lines. And, and I started tracking cities and places in alignment. And, and that yielded, just a tremendous amount of, of information. And not only about the original civilization, but about what happened to it, because I kept encountering the historical narrative when I was looking at these places and who was there and you know, who came in, what, what country, what um, East India company or some other kind of trading company and you know, it's just, it's just really led me into a pretty high level of awareness about what's taken place here. And it's like the information is contained in the original infrastructure. Um, you have to learn to read between the lines because it's not written down. But I, I was seeing the same signature, same hand of design all over the earth mm -hmm. at these places. And and I would look for certain things and I would always find what I was looking for. And, and so the whole big picture started to come out and, and that led me down the path of, of learning about how this realm was taken over, um, exactly what they did to uh, cover things up, destroy the infrastructure, you know, the, the role of wars and conflicts and civil wars in, in the destruction of this original civilization. And, you know, it's just been really an amazing journey and it's, it's multifaceted. Um, but the, the starting point for me was, was doing this research of these alignments. And then I was able to start to put bigger picture pieces together. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm getting close to 74,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's, it's, it's grown considerably. I say I started about six years ago. It's, it's grown the most, I guess, in the last three or four years. But I am reaching a lot of people. And it's always been the Moors for me. I, mm -hmm. I started with the Moors. And 
I accept it, it's truth. And um, it's led me to, to really being able to, I'm gonna stop sharing here. Mm -hmm. um, if I did not have the Moorish paradigm, then I would be like everybody else <laughs> going, <laughs> right. you know, why is, <laughs> why is the same thing in Turkey that's in South America? And, you know, mm -hmm. I found a lot more examples of, you know, same, 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 same. Yeah, um, cultural continuity as well. Yeah. And it wasn't that long ago that people were considerably larger. Yeah. And that we're, we're also on top of them. Mm hmm because there was this uh, this cataclysm um, that was created deliberately. I believe directed energy went through the grid system and blew everything out and caused the land to submerge and swamps and deserts and dunes and um, the sinking of Atlantis happened within the last couple hundred years. Yeah. And I... Um, I think it was an unholy trinity of negative beings that saw an opportunity and had a plan. Um, and, and I honestly think that Aleister Crowley was at the heart of what happened here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going into explaining, I've, I've talked about it in some of my work before, but I had a lot of synchronistic things happen to me on this journey of waking up to all of this. And mm -hmm. um, I mentioned Richard Smith earlier and his, uh, I watched his YouTube video called European Confessions of a Moorish Legacy and Pete and Richard's work led me to Peter Moon and um, Peter's work led me into an understanding of, so he talked about the Moors. So Peter and Richard were both talking about the Moors and I was looking for information. It's like, I can't find anything. And, um, and so I read a number of Peter's books and he was talking about the occulted nature of, of this timeline that we're on. And so for whatever reason, I've got all these an armful of puzzle pieces and I'm getting the knowledge of being able to start putting it together in a way where I can say it in a compelling way and not, mm -hmm. you know, not just sound like a crazy person, um, without anything to back it up because I've got the proof. I've got the evidence. And um, like I said, right now I'm about two thirds of the way through putting it out a video that will, will tie it together. And, and I do think yeah. it has implications for what's, what's happening now, because I don't think that um, natural disasters are natural. I don't think mm. hurricanes are natural. I don't think earthquakes are natural. Um, I think a lot of weather we experience, you know, it wasn't like this before. I think they've been manipulating the the surface of the earth and the atmosphere. Um, mm -hmm. And they probably have a number of ways of doing it, but, but sound is really coming out, extra low frequencies and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and, and just sending those sound frequencies into the earth and causing uh, disturbances. I'm sure that's how it started. They may have more sophisticated mm. technology now, but that I think that's how they did it initially. Was I, I agree with that. I mean, sound. what they say, there's nothing new under the sun. And we can see that now with the things that they're using now with weather modification, um, using sound to move things. So uh, CERN and all of this other stuff. And I'm sure that um, it's a lot more that we don't know about that they've been using. Um, I wanna give you a moment just to give some last remarks. We're coming into the hour mark here. Mm -hmm. um, we wanna have you back. Cause I, I feel like we haven't even cracked open the surface of this <laughs> yet. Uh, so we would love to have you back. Um, any closing remarks that you would like to give the people, maybe even let them know what you have coming. Well, you kind of did already, but maybe reiterate and then um, further let them know where they can find you. 
So my primary platforms are my YouTube channel and my blog. And um, I have two ebooks that I've published on Noble 7 Publishing, which is the, the website that um, Phoenix was displaying. And then uh, recently there's an, a new ebook out and, and we have hopes that uh, at some point in the future, we can turn it into its potential um, because it's, it's essentially written as a script. Mm -hmm. um, but how they've, so they have to tell us what they're doing. So what they've done is they've hidden the moors in the literature of around the 1600s. So Shakespeare, Ben Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, Francis Bacon, New Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Just look up New Atlantis and, and read it. <laughs> we're not going to that. We were there. And, and the New Atlantis talks about Solomon's house. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like um, alchemy has been used against us. Um, and so the ancient sciences were, were inverted like everything else. And, and so there's a lot of, of this knowledge, alchemical knowledge um, that's encoded in this literature. Um, so again, let's say about the 1600s, 1700s. And um, one of the early masks that I would have you look up because it's pretty darn obvious <laughs> is called the Mask of Blackness by Ben Johnson. And then he had a follow-up mask called the Mask of Beauty. It's, you know, it's clear that it's talking about the Moors and it's talking about the whitewashing of the Moors. And there's, you know, other little things in there, but they, they put these, they encoded this information in this literature. But it's, you know, it's not, like jump out at you, it's it's very subtle, but it's it's there. And so um, I've been working on a collaborative project with some friends of mine, and um, we just published an ebook on Noble Seven Publishing called the The Liar's Mask, and the retelling of her story. And my friend Stephanie McPeak Peterson, who is quite brilliant and quite tuned into this stuff, um, you know she can read the these texts in the original and get something out of it. And I have to have the Cliff's Notes version if I'm gonna mm -hmm. even read it and then I don't get anything out of it. So she's she's got a particular gift for um, the language of this time and being able to pull information out. And, and she's got some pretty high level guides working with her. And and then she's a, she's a very talented writer. And so, we had been talking about doing this book for a while, and I just did them a whole bunch of research. Um, my friend Stephanie and another friend, Elin, and Elin Carlson, who's a professional singer, and then Shalane Moore Bay, who is very t tuned into the legal side of things. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I'm like, I, I kind of gave them a, a whole bunch of information. I said, this is what we need to put in there. And there's a lot of good information in what I sent them, but it was like, just a slump of information, like, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> so my, my friend Elin suggested basing it on the magic flute, Mozart's magic mm. flute, and, and the hero, Prince Tomino, um, representing humanity on the hero's journey. Mm. And, and using the mask concept as a vehicle for, um, for the story. And then, and then once we had the direction for the story, you know, Stephanie was just able to kind of collate all the information there in a way that it's, it turned out really well. And so all the proceeds from this at this point are going to the next level, which is either doing an audio book or, you know, it's written in such a way that, um, that it can be turned into a play even potentially be turned into a movie, but we're, we're quite a ways from that. But it, it definitely has a lot of potential. So, so the masks were a way that this in information has been hidden from us. And, um, and so it, it's a play on that, but there's also a lot of truth, truth bombs in that, in that little mm -hmm. story, The Liar's Mask. 
So um, just, it's, we've only had it out for about a month and I just encourage you um, to, at least if you go to the website and read about it and read about us and our bios and see if it looks interesting to you. But, you know, we're trying to, to cram it in such a way that, or frame it, I should say, um, this information that is, uh, that reaches people um, in, a, in a little bit of a different way. That is beautiful. Look, we really appreciate you just taking your time to come out today and give us some of this information. Again, we would love to have you back. So I will be in contact with you and see if we can get you back on the show soon. Um, we want to thank everybody who tuned in, everybody who came in, gave their love, uh, their comments and their questions. Um, again, you guys, please make sure you head over to her website, um, Piercing. Uh, the veil of illusion.com. This is her blog site. And when I tell you, you'll be on there reading and reading and reading and reading, and you won't want to stop. I mean it. That's what happened with me. I'm just reading, 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 and don't want to stop. You can also head over to the YouTube channel that she has, which is at Michelle Gibson 8946. That's another place where you're going to find video after video after video full of information. Very, very informative. I get stuck there also when I'm at work, I'm on there. When I'm at home, I'm on there. It is a lot of information. A lot of things that for me, I kind of heard of, had a question, but I am, and I'm going to speak directly to you, Ms. Gibson. I am totally thankful for all the work that you have done for providing this information to us because it fills in those those blank spots. It answers all those questions that sometimes we're afraid to ask because, you know, they make it like it's taboo for us to ask about Moors or about our history. They always want to bombard us with slavery, 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 slavery as African Americans, as um, Indigenous Americans, as Black folks, whatever we want to call ourselves. So I thank you so much, so much for all your work, um, your books. Please head over to the website here buy this book today.com under noble seven publishings please purchase her books full of full of information let's support her let's uh make sure that we're able to still gain some of the knowledge and wisdom that she's willing to share with us while we have that opportunity to receive All right thank you so much you're very welcome uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here today with all of you and um and and we've all been lied to you know, we're, we're living in a completely fabricated world and we're starting to wake up and, you know, they don't have, they don't have power. They just have to trick us into giving our power away and yeah. say, no, we don't consent <laughs> at all. Absolutely. And, and that's, they have to have our consent. And so the more people that know that, that, um, that we do have power and, we have it together um, and they're terrified of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to dive deeper and, and further in the next time we get you on the show. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end things here. Um, again, thank you guys so much for being here with us. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here with us and we appreciate you so much. Until next time, this is Peace Pipe TV. Please head over to peacepipetv.com if you're interested in getting your genealogy done. If you're interested in uh, establishing your trust, your family trust, um, and so much more, you can go to the website again. That is peacepipetv.com where we have uh, a few services that are available to you to help you to secure, discover, or to discover, establish, and secure your bloodline. Until next time, this is Peace Pipe TV. I'm Phoenix Nadi. Uh, Shapisha Lashike. Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>